War, unstable nuclear states, big tech monopoly, and climate change, just some of the biggest challenges facing humanity. But how do we tackle them? Alone, there isn't much we can do, which is why we need vibrant and dedicated leaders, people who are up to the task, people with a spring in their step. Unfortunately, that's missing in most countries, especially in the United States of America. President Joe Biden will turn 81 in November, this November, he turns 81. Let's assume he gets re-elected next year. He would be 86 years old by the end of his second term, 86 years old. If it's not Biden, it could be Donald Trump. And Trump is 77 years old right now. He would be 82 by the end of his second term. That's peak retirement age. Actually, scratch that. That's 20 years after peak retirement age. Should leaders this all be contesting? And that too for the country's top office. US Senator Mitt Romney says no. Romney himself is 76 years old. He doesn't plan to run for re-election. Why is that? Because of age. Romney would be in his mid-80s by the end of another term. So instead of running, he's retiring. And he's asking Trump and Biden to do the same. Listen to this. I think it would be a great thing if both President Biden and former President Trump were to stand aside and let their respective party pick someone in the next generation. Uh, President Trump, excuse me, President Biden, when he was running, said he was a transitional figure to the next generation. Well, time to transition. Biden did say that. In 2020, he called himself a transitional president. But clearly, there is none happening. No transition. Biden wants to stay in the White House. Donald Trump wants to return. But should either of them be on the ballot? I know these are uncomfortable questions. You don't want to discriminate based on age. But how old is too old? The average life expectancy in the US is 77 years. Both Biden and Trump are over that. So what is their excuse to keep running? I can guess what Trump would say. There are 12 candidates running for the Republican nomination. Trump is by far the favorite. Around 60% of Republican voters support Trump. They know he's old. They know he will be 82 by 2029, yet they support him. So the voters too must take some of the blame. Biden's case is different. As president, he does not face any real challenge. There are three candidates, including Biden. One of them is Robert Kennedy Jr. He recently took a shot at Biden's age. He said people should vote for a president who can complete their term. In other words, Kennedy does not think Biden will. And the president has not helped his case. Last week, he attended the Medal of Honor ceremony. In the middle of it, he walked out. No explanation, no statement. Just look at what happened. This is a problem across U.S. politics. Senator Mitch McConnell had two worrying episodes. He froze in the middle of a press conference. He said nothing. He simply stared into the blank space. Partisan cooperation and a string of Connell is the top Republican in the U.S. Senate. Biden is the president. And Trump wants to be president. Why is it that all these leaders are old, not to mention white and men? We can think of a number of explanations. Maybe youngsters are simply not interested in politics, or maybe it's too tough to break out. You need millions of dollars to run a Senate campaign, even more for president. You cannot do that without corporate interests. And who would they support? Who would the corporate support? A young, dynamic politician? or an aging leader who loves the status quo. There you have it. Only 5% of world leaders are over 80 years of age. 35% are in their 60s and 22% are in their 50s. What about India? The Lok Sabha's average age is 53. The global average for lawmakers is 54, so not too bad with India. The Indian cabinet, though, is a bit older. It was around 58 years in 2021, the average age. But these are acceptable numbers. In the U.S., they're much higher. The average age in the U.S. Senate is 64 years. That's a decade older than the global average. The question is, how do you correct this? 
How old should be considered too old? And it's a tough question to answer. Every person is different. Maybe you're still active and sharp at 75, or maybe your neighbor, but maybe your neighbor is not. So setting an arbitrary age limit could be problematic. Having said that, we already do it. In the US, you must be 35 years old to run for president. Here in India, you must be 25 to contest for the Lok Sabha. So by extension, you must be 25 years old to be the prime minister of India. So if lower age limits are fine, why not upper limits? My point is, we need to face the uncomfortable truth. Wanting young politicians is not ageism. It is simply rational thought. I'm sure some politicians remain sharp into their 70s and 80s, but we cannot look at exceptions. We need to look at the norm. Think of it as a two-step plan. First, remove the filter of ageism. Look at it from the point of national interest. Who is fit to lead? And secondly, have a conversation. Some people will say 70 should be the upper limit. Others will say 50 or 60. The point of democracy is to find the middle ground.